In this presentation, we're going to add transactions related to payroll, related to payroll checks that has been received through the bank feeds within our accounting system. Here we go with zero. Here we are in our Triple G Company dashboard. We're going to be opening up our financial statements, going to the accounting drop down, going on down to that balance sheet. Once that opens up, we're going to be right clicking up top and we're going to be duplicating that tab by right clicking and duplicating. We're going to go back to the tab to the left then, opening up the income statement, selecting the accounting drop down, going on down to that income statement so that we can open it up and then duplicate that tab as well, that financial statement. So we're going to go back up top to the income statement tab, right click on it and duplicate that tab. Then we're going to go back to the left. We're going to do this again. We're going to go to the accounting drop down this time to the reports, the second option under the accounting drop down at this point in time. We're going to scroll down under the accounting section. We're looking at the bank reconciliation summary. Once the bank reconciliation summary opens up, we're going to right click on that tab up top. Once again, duplicating that report. Then we're going to go to the balance sheet tab on the right. We're going to change the dates, the dates that we are working in with. And that's going to be up to uh, April. We're in April. So we're going to go into that one. And then we're going to go into the uh, income statement. Now, I'm only going to change the beginning date because we don't have any data past April anyway. So I just want to move the starting point so we only see the April data and not the data that we input in uh, March. So here we have the April data just for the month of April because we haven't entered anything after that point. Then if we go to the bank reconciliation, uh, we're going to say that we want this for the checking account here. We're going to be picking up the checking account. And once again, that date, we're, we're working in April. We're working in April here. And we're going to update that. And there we have that one. Now let's go back to the first tab. And we're going to be going to the accounting drop down, looking at our bank accounts. We're looking at the reconciling. We're creating our financial statements from the bank feed information. We have 11 left down here. As you can see, we're going to click on that reconcile 11 items. And that'll take us to our bank reconciliation. I'm going to hold down control, scroll up just a bit, bringing us up to that uh, 125. 125, that's where I like to be so that we can see. And then I'm going to go down and we're looking for these two items. Now, these two, I happen to know are payroll items. And that's another one I just kind of want to point out. If you have payroll and you're dealing with the bank feeds, and our goal here is to just basically wait till everything hits the uh, bank feeds and then enter it into the system. Well, payroll kind of throws a a problem at us and with that with that as well because payroll is a bit more complicated for us to be processing now with payroll when you're considering payroll there's a couple options you have with zero you could be going and setting up what zero recommends to kind of have a, an add-on and that's going to be the payroll with gusto here and and um we're not going to do that because it's going to be an add-on feature and you'd have to pay money for basically the add-on. That's how it would be with most accounting software systems. In other words, even if it's done within the accounting software, it's usually going to be an add-on type of feature. It's going to cost more, in other words, to process the payroll. So you could do that. or you And if you did that, then you'd be processing payroll through the zero system. In other words, you wouldn't be on a cash basis system where you're basically totally reliant on the bank feeds. You'd have to actually process the payroll through zero. And then when you go into this point, you'd be matching up that transaction. So that's one way you could do it uh, if you have uh, the employees. The other thing you could, you could think about doing is what if you had a third party payroll that was gonna take care of nothing but payroll, something like an ADP or a paychecks. They might take care of payroll outside of your zero system and then give you that information periodically and we'd have to enter it into the system. So for example, if you had something like that, that's how we're gonna imagine this is set up. Let's say we had someone else, third party doing our payroll for us and they basically are gonna be tracking all the information that would look something like this. We have our two employees, Adam and Erica, someone else is processing the payroll and they're gonna calculate all that information that the employee needs, including the gross pay, what was taken out, including like Social Security, Medicare and income tax, which would, would result in the net check. So there's the net check. So in this case, then the net check for Adam is what would actually be processed through our system. So if they then process that transaction through our bank account, what would actually come out of our bank account? The net check, 3,539.33. So we can rely on the, the third party say, to give the employee everything they need, which is a, a pay stub each time, telling the employee, hey, here's the gross pay, here's what we took out for payroll taxes on a check by check basis and a year to date basis and do with any other kind of human resources, payroll kind of stuff that needs to be provided. 
And then on our side, how can we then enter this into our system so that we have the data to make our financial statements? So what we're considering under the most basic kind of system is to say, hey, look, if you need more detail on the financial transactions on a person by person, employee by employee, pay stub by pay stub basis, go to the third party payroll reports and they're going to take care of that. If you need the financial information, what's the effect on the bottom line financials, then we're going to try to include that on basically a cash basis into our uh, system uh, using the bank feeds. So, so that's how we're going to work it. And then we have the employer portion, which means that we have to pay over and above these two amounts. So what happens from a transactional standpoint, typically, if you were going to enter this in, you would say, like, if I was going to enter this transaction for the, for the payroll, I'd have to say that we'd have the payroll expense would be increasing by the gross amount. And then we'd have the uh, payroll liabilities that we took out, which was the 1044. And then the actual check that's going to be decreasing the checking account would be the 353933. Uh, so we could enter this basically detailed information on an employee by employee basis and then match that out, match that out to what we to what we see here in terms of the net check, right? The 3539, I think that 3539 is here. So we could enter those three accounts, but then we're still kind of on an accrual basis because we're dealing with this payroll liabilities payable. So if you want to be completely on the bank feeds, then you'd say, well, I'm just going to record what has actually been paid. So in this case, we're going to say that the checking account has been paid uh, the 3,539. And so we're just, we could just record that basically to, to uh, payroll expense or wages payable or whatever the expense account is. Now it's not exactly right on an accrual basis, right? It's not exactly right because they actually earned 4,583. And the reason we didn't pay them 4,583 is because we took from them their withholdings uh, and we have to pay that to the government. But that's being tracked, hopefully, by that's going to be tracked by our third party payroll uh, professionals. And what we're going to do is say, well, we'll just record the net check right now. Possibly this would be the cash basis method of doing that. And then when they take this money, when they take this money and pay it to the government, that's when it will that's when that amount will clear the um, we'll see it in the bank feeds. And that's when we'll pick up the rest of it. That's when we'll pick up the other amount that's going to go to the payroll expense when they actually pay it. So you'll see there's a timing difference here. So you can you can work this out and be on a cash basis, but you still need you'll be dependent on the third party to, to process the payroll reports, the 940s and the 941s. And you might want to th be dependent on the accountant at the end of the year to make any kind of adjustments that might need to be made for financial statement purposes or tax purposes to tie out the payroll to the financial reports. So that's how, that's how we're going to say it now. We're going to say that the check went out for, for these two amounts. This is the net check. We're just going to record the net check to payroll. We're not going to report the liability that was withheld. If you want to know about it, that detail, go to the payroll professionals. We will record it on our side when it clears the bank, when it's actually paid. So once we pay it, then we'll record it on our side on a cash basis, as well as the employer portion. Uh, once we actually pay it, we'll put that all to one account, which is basically payroll uh, expense, right? Payroll expense, including payroll taxes and the uh, wages. So that's how we're that's how we're basically thinking about that. That payroll is one of those inf one of those areas where you you do want to discuss this with your accountant and your CPA and and see what, what's the best system that you can set up, both logistically for ease purposes and of course to take care of the payroll. It can be somewhat complex, not an area you you want to really mess up on. Uh, because it could get kind of messy once things get out, get out of whack with the payroll. So we're going to be adding this to the payroll. So I'm going to say Adam. I'm just going to copy Adam over here. And new contact. I'm just going to say it's a new contact. And we're going to see if we have any uh, payroll. So if I scroll down here, we've got something. I think it was. Yeah, here it is. Wages and salaries. So wages and salaries. I'm going to pick that up. And that's going to be the one. And, and I'm going to call it, you know, this is payroll, we'll say. And that's just on a cash basis method. So this is going to be creating a transaction, which will decrease the checking account, record the other side to an expense account for the payroll on the net check uh, method. And we'll deal with it. We'll deal with this basically as it comes through on a cash basis rather than having a payable. So I'm going to say, OK, I'm going to do the same thing with Erica. So I'm going to copy Erica. That's our other uh, basically employee. And we're going to paste this here. And obviously, this is the, if we do this method, then 
uh, we can clearly just take this information directly from from the bank feeds and just always be posting it to payroll. And once we see the payroll taxes being paid, taken out and go into the government, we could we could post those out in a similar fashion. That'll make it easy for us to, to just take this directly from the bank feeds and be on a cash basis method. We can memorize these transactions in that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay, and we've added those two in a similar fashion as we've seen in the past. If we go then to the balance sheet and uh, update this, we're going to see these coming out of the checking account. So if we go into the checking account, of course, the checking account will be decreasing by these amounts that we have included. So if we scroll down here, we have uh, Erica. We should see Erica and uh, there they are. Erica is here and, and Adam. Then I'm going to go back to the balance sheet, go to the income statement. And once I update this, we're going to see the wages expense down here. So we're going to see that. I'm going to scroll back up top and update that. And then if I scroll back down, we see uh, wages then popping up. So there's going to be the wages for the month of April. It's on a net check basis, which isn't exactly right. It should be the gross pay, but we're going to wait till the other amount clears the bank, you know, until we make the payment for the payroll taxes. And then we'll record those as an expense foregoing or not including the accrual component, which is the payable component. And then we're going to go back to the to the bank accounts here once i update this this number right here is going to be matching what's on the balance sheet so the balance sheet which is the 173097 and then we're going to see it disappear the, the amounts that are going to erica and uh, adam so let's update that and so that should bring the balance to the 173097 balance sheet is that what's on the balance sheet yes so we're good there those two amounts gone ending balance this should match what's on the bank statement at the end of the day it does not yet here's our bank statement at the end of the day it should be at this amount once we reconcile everything then then we should be that should be the case down here so we're going to keep on adding these and that should be the case so if i go back over currently it's at uh 186 uh 62308 uh 186 it's actually tying out right now but that's because these items that happen to be the reconciled items, they shouldn't be the, the reconciled items. They're going to be included. What these should be is not reconciling, but included in this balance up here. So we're going to basically, it, you can see the two sides of the transaction. We're going to remove it from here, and then we're going to add these transactions to what is actually on the book side and therefore have no you know reconciling difference items because these are all items directly from the bank that we're just going to add onto our books in some way shape or form therefore have no reconciling items which usually are outstanding transactions uh that that should be uh in here if we're doing if we're doing more of a of an accrual method and not being completely dependent on the bank feeds to create the financial statements then if we go to the first tab let's take a look at the first tab and scroll back up we look at the bank statement information on the bank statement information we will see those two paychecks uh, which were already there before for Erica and Adam, but now having them be uh, reconciled. So we have these two items down here, Erica and Adam have now been reconciled. Now note, I just noticed here, we have another transaction up top for Adam and we could reconcile that as well. You might say, and you might ask, you know, why is Adam here twice and Eric's only, Erica is only there once? Note that if you're actually giving the check to Adam, Adam might have held on to a check from the prior payroll and didn't didn't deposit them until the current payroll period. So since we're waiting till it clears the bank, there could be some lag in terms of when it actually clears the bank. Because if we wrote the check, it would be some time in the past. So it's quite possible that Adam, you know, uh, cashed two checks in the current month, even though you know for two payroll periods. And that's a kind of thing, that's kind of timing difference that could happen with uh when when you're using the bank feeds and you're depending on the bank feeds you're not going to see it until it clears the bank so let's see if we could find that other one over here and, and post that one out so i'm going to go back to uh, uh the reconcile let's go back to the reconcile and there should be another one that's unreconciled for adam here so let's go down through this and we see then this is fender chase here's the other one for adam so same process. Notice now it's remembering it. So the payroll can be remembered and it's pulling this information over because it's the same information. It's going to go to wages and salaries. That's it. That's okay. That's what we want. Both of these are happening in April, which shouldn't be the case if we were entering this, the payroll as the payroll happens because the payroll happened sometime in the prior month and one in April because we're doing it monthly. 
Those two things happened to clear in April because Adam held on to the, his check and didn't deposit it until April. So since we're dependent on the bank for this to clear, it didn't happen until until April. We have two of these things happen. That's the timing difference between, you know, process it on, a, on an accrual basis or when the actual transaction happened, even in a cash basis, when the transaction happened versus when it cleared the bank. Those two things are going to be another timing difference, even if you're on a cash basis. So I'm going to go ahead and add this one as well. And then we should see that then clear. And so now that will in be included in the balance sheet. So if I update the balance sheet, now we're at the 169,585 on the balance sheet. The income statement, if we update the income statement, then we are at the uh, wages at the 7682. If we update the bank reconciliation, this amount will then tie out to the new balance on the balance sheet. So let's go ahead and update that. So there we have that item. So 169,585, which is what ties out here, 169,585, back to the first tab, up to the top. Then if we go to the bank statement information, we should have uh, all of the payroll items that have been reconciled and cleared. So there's Adam there and the two down below. And if we go to our accounting transactions, now we've added those three payroll items. We've both included them and of course reconciled them at the same point in time. That's it for now. Let's get out of here.